years ago, I traveled with my team to Nwajahan, a small rural village in Mozambique, to learn about the daily struggles the local people face to access water. While at a well, we spoke with some of the ladies who were collecting water and asked them what they would do with their time and energy if they didn't need to collect water every day. To our disbelief, they really had not considered an alternate reality. We then realized that not only are these women being deprived of their time and energy, but they are also being robbed of the opportunity to hope and realize their dreams. It would have been futile for them to entertain ideas for their future when their lives are confined to a singular path predicated on basic sustenance, just like their mothers and grandmothers before them. After speaking with the women, we offered to help them carry their buckets to their homes. And they laughed at us because men don't customarily help with this laborious task. But we insisted that we help them. And after another giggle from the ladies, we carried buckets of water for the first time in our lives. And it was a very humbling experience for us because the women take this 20 kilo or 45 pound bucket and carry it on their head very gracefully and make it look easy. But we were not familiar with that technique. So we carried the bucket the only way we knew how and had an exhausting 45 minutes walking to their homes. And fortunately for us, they live relatively close to the well. They told us about other women who need to travel twice as far as they had to travel. And they need to do this several times every day to meet their daily needs. According to the United Nations Factbook number 35, the right to water, young women and children walk an average of six kilometers every day just to collect water. When we finally got to the women's homes, we met their children and learned that they wake up at 3 a.m. every morning to help their moms fetch water from the well, and again when they get home from school. We then went to the school and spoke with their teachers, and they told us that the children had difficulties learning because they were tired and hungry and thirsty, which affected their attention spans. And again, this ultimately affected their learning outcomes. So despite having good teachers who cared about their students and quality teaching materials to guide their, their lessons, the children really struggled to learn. This reality is not unique to Mozambique. Over one billion people lack sustainable access to clean water and electricity, which together form the foundation on which you can build an evolving society. Without these socially critical infrastructure, women and children have limited opportunities for development. Food insecurity is heightened, and economic mobility is nearly impossible. These communities are stuck in a cycle of poverty and disease, and without support, will continue to spin their wheels without gaining traction. The most startling statistic for me is that every two minutes, a child under the age of five years old is killed by a water-related disease. More children perish from water-related diseases than malaria, measles, and HIV combined. The worst part is that these deaths are completely preventable. Like most of you here this evening, I grew up with plentiful access to clean water and electricity. Formal education was a legal and enforceable requirement. And my parents assured that my basic needs were met. 
I was raised in a society where I had the opportunity to realize my potential. People without sustainable access to clean water and electricity do not share these same opportunities that we share. Did you know that most charitable solutions for providing drinking water to communities largely remain limited to digging wells? Although wells provide some basic relief, they typically fall into disrepair within five years. And women and children still need to fetch and haul water every day. To truly empower a community, infrastructure projects must scalably and sustainably address the problem. You see, I believe that talent is evenly distributed across the planet, but opportunity is not. Therefore, if we can solve the problems that trap communities in cycles of disenfranchisement, more will be able to develop their unique talents and contribute to the global pool of talent able to address humanity's greatest challenges. The next cure, invention, or discovery is that much likelier and sooner when more are able to contribute their unique talents in collaboration with the greater human diaspora. Where there is both water and electricity, health, educational, and agricultural opportunities are greater. Productive output is enhanced. This creates stable and sustainable countries and communities. It has been said that the true measure of a society can be found in how it treats its most vulnerable members. If this is true, why doesn't the world we live in encourage and incentivize all of us to improve humanity? We have made giant leaps in technology over the past several decades, and for the first time in human history, we have the global resources, knowledge, and capabilities to do seemingly anything. Extend our lifespans, send rockets to Mars, develop artificial intelligence, and now we can eradicate poverty. Everyone can have water, food, shelter, electricity, education, and basic health care if we have the collective will and take action. I think we should shift our paradigm from one of scarcity to abundance. And as we do that, reconsider how we coordinate as a species. When we share a paradigm of scarcity, humans are forced to compete, and competition is what propels humanity forward. However, when we have a uh, paradigm of abundance, collaboration is the path that will take us to greater heights. When we are no longer playing zero-sum games where one person's gain is another person's loss, we can finally best determine how to collaborate as a species to improve the planet for all of its inhabitants. So how do we do this? How do we transition to a global society that is incentivized to improve all of our humanity? Well, to start, we need leaders who are going to facilitate the achievement of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals for 2030, also known as the SDGs. These goals, such as no poverty, zero hunger, universal access to clean water and sanitation, and universal access to clean and affordable energy is paramount to evolving societies. All companies should comply with the basic environmental, social, and governance criteria. And the most profitable companies should craft corporate social responsibility programs 
that support the communities where they work. Voters should evaluate their politicians based on their will to improve humanity and protect the natural environment, and then hold them accountable to take action. And at the individual level, investors and consumers should only support companies that comply with the basic ESG standards. Another powerful way to systematically align us could be through emergent digital assets and blockchain technology. Money is able to motivate humans like nothing else, and cryptocurrencies. Coins and tokens could create and coordinate incentives that that align our collaborative efforts to improve the social and environmental state of the planet. Imagine we can have a coin for each of the 17 SDGs on a blockchain such as Bitcoin or Ethereum or new blockchain, and evaluate the strength of each coin. Based on how much work is still left to do to rehabilitate the planet, the more urgent the call to action, the more valuable the SDG coin. When particular sectors need critical attention, those related SDG coins become more valuable, thereby, thereby economically motivating humans to pursue initiatives that are beneficent to the greater good. These are just a few ideas that could help to improve capitalism and move our our humanity in a more compassionate and inclusive direction. By empowering communities like Nwa Jahan, we can finally democratize opportunity, fuel innovation, fight corruption. Decrease crime and protect our natural environments. All of which is in the best interest of our shared humanity. We need to think bigger and more systematically when we talk about inclusion. It is the key ingredient to creating a socially just and healthy planet. Thank you. <laughs>